Smallpox was a virus. It was an orthopox virus. And as you know, viruses can't reproduce on their own, so they hijack cells and then they destroy that cell. Smallpox emerged in its endemic form in India 25,000 to 30,000 years ago. Smallpox was endemic meaning that it was known in a certain spot for a certain period of time, or uh, pandemic, meaning that it was just prevalent all over a country or the world. Sometimes in history, smallpox only hits like little, little sprinkles here and there. Other times in history, it's a freaking downpour and just everybody's got smallpox for you, and you get smallpox, and you get smallpox. Ah! The first tangible evidence of smallpox is on Ramses V's mummy. You can see pockmarks on his mummy, on his dead skin, on his nasty skin. You see it there? Smallpox is caused by the inhalation of the variola virus. The variola virus like to hang on to mucus droplets, so you could get it if you had a little too much face-to-face -face contact with an infected person. But don't go thinking that staying away from people is going to keep you safe from this thing. Thing. See, it, all can, it also can attach to things called fomites, you know, particles on anything, just little particle pieces of dust, you know, and they could hang out on bedding or whatever. Uh, it wasn't caused by bugs or animals, though. It wasn't spread that way. When smallpox does invade the body, it gets over to the throat and mouth. It gets in through the throat and mouth, then gets over to the lymph nodes, and then begins to reproduce. It has an incubation period of around 12 days, but by 12 days, it's reproduced enough of itself where it feels pretty confident to say, hey, you know what? I think I'm gonna go and, and see the world, you know? And so, uh, and so it makes its way through the bloodstream, and it's, you know, reproduced itself pretty well, goes through the bloodstream, and it decides to, I'm going to infect the bone marrow and the lymph nodes. And so it is done. Then we get what we call the prodromal phase, which is uh, followed by the headache, uh, the general discomfort, malaise, and of course, you know, the nausea, the muscle pain, the vomiting. And this goes on for about two to four days. And then in 12 to 15 days, you get these small reddish spots that appear in the tongue, mouth, uh, you know, in, in the throat, and the palate, and then they start to enlarge, and they rupture, and they throw more virus out. You know, there you go. <laughs> Good luck. The virus loved to attack skin cells. It had a skin cell fetish, and it had this. That's where you get this uh, this big macular rash, the trademark smallpox macular rash, full of macules and papules. And it starts on the forehead, and then the whole face, and then the shoulders and the extremities. And from this point, the virus has some options. And none of them involve helping you. Sorry, dude. I don't know, it's a virus, that's what they do. First, there's ordinary type smallpox. And this is Mr. Boring Old Ordinary Type. He, you know, this is the common one, of course. Uh, this is the one that produces the rash where the pustules stand out on the skin. And the rash itself is really a factor here. It's really a factor here. It was said that the more confluent the rash was, the higher the fatality rate would be. Then there's modified type smallpox. This usually happened in people who had been vaccinated for smallpox itself. It was often mistaken for chickenpox because there was no fever during the evolution of the rash itself. Then there's malignant type smallpox. Nobody really knows why anybody got malignant type smallpox, but it was almost always fatal. About 5-10% to 10 of all smallpox cases were malignant type. The lesions would be flush with the skin and wouldn't be raised. Almost all the cases were children, and almost all the children died. Then there's hemorrhagic smallpox. Hemorrhagic smallpox was almost always fatal as well, and happened mainly in adults. About 2% of all smallpox cases are hemorrhagic smallpox. It causes the mucous membranes, the skin, and the internal organs to bleed. It was called the black pox because it would bleed under the skin, making the skin, and the blood would dry, making the skin look black. Uh, death would occur between uh, five to seven days of infection. As horrible as a disease smallpox was, human beings are horribler. They're very, very hard to kill. 
They're very, very hard to kill. Trust me, I know. It's very hard. And when these bastards will not die from smallpox, they get an immunity to smallpox, and these bastards really will not die. Which is very frustrating. It's very, very frustrating. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk a little bit about that later. But not yet. First, we need to talk about what smallpox did to people throughout history. This is very significant. This is very important stuff. And we're going to talk about that next time. Right here on Terrifying World.